Okay, so picking up right where we left off, we had given the ability to move left and right. So now let's start creating some obstacles. So game object, 3D ob object, cube. Let's make this one more narrow though. Let's make it 0.5 only. And we'll make sure that it's centered in its uh, respective column. So it's already defaulted to zero. So let's move it back a little bit. Let's rename this. Oops, didn't mean to zoom in. So call it OBST, short for obstacle. Copy. Paste. Paste. Now one thing I want to point out is when you create these 3D objects, by default they have a box collider, so they're already uh, set up for collisions. So let's take our second one, move it over, and of course when you test in the game you're going to have to make sure that these aren't on top of each other uh, so is that, that uh, there is room to be navigated. You want the game to be fair, of course, you don't want it to be impossible. So this one's centered at zero, this one's centered at one, and we'll create one more centered at uh, negative one. And we'll just push these down a little bit because they're obviously floating. Now what we're going to do is they have a default material. We're going to create a new material so we can change its color. Later on if we start to really uh, get rid of the uh, placeholder graphics we could give it a better material but for now we're just looking to add a little color. So create material, call it matte one, click on it, albedo, we'll just make it red so it stands out and then we'll click on our obstacle and just drag it so rather than dragging it right on top of material I just dragged it to the bottom and it overrode it so just drag it to the bottom and if you notice when uh, if I overlap with the um, scene itself that you'll notice that the object was changing color if I was to let go right there and then. Like, see how I'm pointing at that and it's red? So you can drag it right into the scene if you want. Alright, so now we have three objects. We've given them their own custom material. And now what we're going to do is... We are going to look for collisions. Now right now, because everything by default has a box collider, what will happen is the orb will hit this, it'll stop moving, and the camera will keep going, which obviously breaks the game. So what we're going to do is we're just going to destroy the object. A lot of infinite running, endless running games uh, have one hit and you're done. We're going to do that for now. We'll probably change it later, but one hit and you're done is much easier because it's just a simple matter of okay destroying the game object and going to some kind of summary screen if you want to be able to take multiple hits then you have hit points and you have to make the object uh, immaterial that way it can pass through the solid objects um, and, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that eventually just right now we're trying to do the basics so we've added three objects we modified their size gave them a custom material now we're going to look for collisions. Well, there's going to be lots and lots of objects that you collide with. Some of them are going to be power-ups, so you don't want everything to destroy you. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a tag to obstacles, and then based on that tag, we'll determine what happens. So what we're going to do is up here, we're going to go to Add Tag, and we're going to click on the plus sign, and we're going to type out Lethal. 
we now click on our three obstacles, choose tag, lethal. They have all now been tagged as lethal. If you go into your move orb script, we're going to add a new section outside of update, outside of IE numerator. So void on collision enter collision other. So you're tracking what is being collided with. So we're going to use that other. So if other dot name other dot game object dot name there we go equals equals lethal so uh, actually sorry not name so tag equals equals lethal so that is the tag we just created so the script is attached this script is attached to the orb if a collision happens and this is a pre uh, this routine is pre-existing, so you have to make sure you get the case right. Capital O, capital C, capital E, the capital C there as well. So, if other dot game object dot tag is equal to lethal, so if the tag attribute of the object you're colliding with, so that's what this is saying. So other, other. If the tag of other is lethal, we want something to happen destroy the game object that the script is attached to which happens to be the orb so if I hit an object that's tagged as lethal it should destroy it and it did there's a pause so um, on that time it didn't pause so it might have been just because it was the first time. So great. Lethal objects are destroying the orb, and then you would go to like a game summary. Again, we can change it later, just trying to get the basics in, the, the fact that certain things uh, do damage and other things are beneficial. So just to make sure that this is working, what we're going to do is we're going to add another game object, 3D, cube, and we'll also make it smaller. And this isn't permanent, we're just testing. So, if I hit that, the ball will still stop because it has a collider, but it will not destroy the game object. Let's move it a little bit further then. It will not destroy the game object because it does not have the tag of lethal. So let's see if this is working. Perfect. So now, because of this, you can differentiate between uh, an obstacle that damage you, damages you and, say, a power-up that gives you uh, more health, makes you go faster, gives you ammunition, whatever. So let's delete that one since that was just to test and that's really advisable that just because the positive works doesn't mean it's working correctly you also want to check a negative scenario and in that case the negative was when it was hitting something that did not have the lethal tag so it's always good to to check so now the other kind of obstacle is going to be a pit and that's gonna be a little bit different because this has a solid object that can be collided with a pit, not so much. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a pit right here. Now what makes this challenging is we're trying to collide with something that does not exist. So there's a range of ways to go about this. What you can do is you can create a, a, 
an object that does not have a polygon, doesn't have a mesh, doesn't have anything. It's a blank game object, but does have a collider box. And so you would just check with that collision, and um, it would also be set as a tag. So game object, create empty. Let's move it to here. So we said that this was uh, negative 1. It looks like it's 16. So negative 1. Actually, it would be just positive. It would be 0 since it's the center. And 16. Now we need to add the collider box. So uh, physics box collider. Let's see how that looks. That looks just about right. Let's trim it just a little bit. Like I said, we want to be careful about not being unforgiving. So 0.9, 0.8, 0.9, 0.9. So what you're doing is the player won't see anything when they're playing, but there's actually a collider box there. And it too can get that tag of lethal. Now if we were using gravity, uh, you could just have the orb. Uh, if we're Right now the orb doesn't have gravity. Okay, We shut gravity off. If it is using gravity, uh, it would by default roll down into there and then... Um, you could simply check the uh, the y coordinate that if it gets to a certain area, you know, if it goes to like negative 10 or something, then you lose. Um, or you could do a collider. So really, gravity it doesn't really necessarily help you. Um, the only thing that's going to happen here is you won't see it automatically fall. So that's the only downside is that you'll kind of go into the pit and you won't fall. Can always tweak that though. So, let's take that game object, we'll move it up to the top, let's call that pit, and let's go ahead and move our three OBSTs at the top two, since that's what we're working with the most. So now, a collision with the pit should work because you're actually colliding with the invisible object. Has a collider box. Is tagged as lethal. That should work. So let's give it a try. Perfect. So it did disappear. So excellent. So this is an example of code and design that scales incredibly well. I didn't have to add anything to this and it still worked because we're using tag and so we just keep tagging things as lethal and you don't have to do any additional coding. So I'm going to take a look to see how long this video is. Uh, might end here and uh, just start up on the next video.